In this video, we're going to be teaching an AI to play Mario Kart Wii. But since the game's own CPUs are clearly not challenging enough for a modern artificial intelligence, we're going to be putting it up against something that is itself. The arena for this showdown is SNES Mario Circuit 3, a track I chose as it makes for some of the most chaotic races of them all. This AI is going to start off knowing absolutely nothing and will be given just images of the screen and some basic information like speed and acceleration. From this alone, the AI will need to play weeks of Mario Kart so that it can slowly learn how to use this information to become a true Mario Kart god. As I've mentioned though, this AI will not be playing alone, but rather in split screen mode against both itself and the game's own CPUs on the hardest difficulty. Each different AI is controlled by a copy of a single master AI, which will be learning how to play as any character. Don't worry though, the different players aren't in collusion or anything. Each racer cares only about itself and will happily destroy its brethren if it means winning the race. After racing for a little while, the clones send back what they saw in the game to the master AI, which will then slowly learn from the experiences of the entire collective. To get the AI to actually learn, we need to give it some rewards, like little pointers, either encouraging it or giving it a stern telling off. On screen now, you can see me racing around the track alongside the rewards I get as I drive as if I was the AI. Now there's a lot of rewards going on here for all sorts of different things. The main one you can see that I'm getting is constantly a reward of around 0.0. .0. To, which is my position reward. Basically, the better my position, the more reward I get. This is one of the key reasons the different AIs don't like each other. Everyone who's ahead of you is basically stealing your rewards. Another one you can see me getting every now and then is the checkpoint reward of around 1.0. There are 20 checkpoints around each lap, so we give the AI a good pat on the back each time it gets one, encouraging it to get as far around the track as possible. Lastly, there are a few different punishments in there. The most obvious one is for going slowly. If the AI goes off-road, its speed will drop, so we give it a big slap on the wrist to discourage that behaviour as much as possible. While our AI plays, you'll be able to see a little bar chart. This shows how the AI values each of the different actions it can take, in terms of how much reward it thinks it will get. The AI has eight total actions, including wheeling, turning while wheeling, drifting at a bunch of different angles, and using its item. The AI chooses its actions by passing the information through a residual convolutional neural network with around 3 million parameters. Despite all of this complexity, the network ultimately just outputs eight numbers, one for each action, predicting its reward. To choose its action, the AI is just going to select the output that has the highest reward prediction. So while the AIs were driving, when they did something bad, I didn't only give them a punishment, but if all of the AIs were doing really bad, I would just actually restart the race. I did this so that the AI would spend more time driving on the track rather than just into walls while they still didn't know what they were doing. For the first five hours, the AI barely finished a race, but after that we see the race completion percentage really skyrocket. So this wasn't actually my first attempt at creating this AI, but instead my third attempt. The previous two both performed fairly well, however had some clear weaknesses, mostly due to me making some minor mistakes when giving the AI reward. The first had a big problem with not finishing its drift. In Mario Kart, by holding a drift for long enough, you'll see some blue sparks appear by your player, and then you'll get a mini turbo when you release the drift. Getting these mini turbos is really essential for being a good player. The AI seemed to love cancelling its drifts, causing it to lose a whole bunch of time. The AI was still commonly able to get first place against the CPUs, would have been no match for a human player. After my first attempt, I tweaked a bunch of the rewards around, and my last problem was pretty much solved. Despite this though, I made a very minor mistake. One of the other tweaks I made was the turn in wheelie action. This allows you to turn a little while wheeling, which can actually be quite useful for readjusting your direction. This however does cause you to lose a lot of speed, so shouldn't be used unless absolutely necessary. To prevent the AI from doing it too much, I added a small punishment for the action. The only problem was I forgot to add a minus sign, meaning the AI actually got a reward for using that action instead of a punishment. So what we ended up with was an AI that used the turn in wheelie action every single chance it got, which wasn't exactly ideal. Anyway, after fixing things from those two unfortunate attempts, things seemed to be mostly patched up, so it was able to bring our third generation AI to finally play some Mario Kart in peace. Jumping into things, here we start off with the AI at its birth, with no training whatsoever. As you can see, all four of the AIs are just jumping around randomly, quickly crashing into the nearest wall. This is okay though. The point of the start of training is just about learning what works and what doesn't. No harsh judgement. 
After a couple of hours of training, we can already see the AI beginning to come alive. It starts to drive roughly in the right direction at the start, and can even sometimes make it around a couple of corners. Honestly, the speed of this AI's learning really blew me away. After just four hours, it was already making it almost halfway around the track. Part of the reason for this rapid learning was that our AI could learn from all four races at once, meaning four times as much data could be sent back to the master AI. Oh, did I mention that I'm actually running four emulators at once, meaning we could collect even more data? It's pretty incredible that by six hours, the AI is already able to complete its first races. There's still a lot of rough edges, but at times the AI could almost pass for a bad human player if you don't look too closely. For now though, the AI isn't yet a match for the game's hard CPUs and isn't going to be taking home any victories. But I have to ask, how good were you after just six hours? Eight hours in, and things are still pretty similar to two hours ago. Once the AI can complete the track, improvement is effectively just a collection of small optimizations and patching up holes in its knowledge. For example, at the moment, the AI might not know how to recover if it gets knocked off the track and stuck behind a pipe, or if it gets bloopered, or any other obscure situation. This lack of knowledge causes poor performance, but just some of the time, and slowly but surely, the AI will patch things up. By 12 hours in, the AI has patched up enough gaps in its understanding that it's no longer finishing towards the bottom, but now at least one or two of the AIs are usually picking up a first place. So in just 12 hours, the AI was able to exceed the performance of the game's hardest difficulty with items on the game's fastest speed setting of 150cc. The AI is still far from perfect. It's pretty common for one of the two AIs to finish dead last at the moment, but this is just a sign of what's to come. After a whole day of training, the AI pretty much had the fundamentals down and was honestly a force to be reckoned with. You can see from the graph of training just how quickly the AI had improved until this point. What this really shows though, is that until now, the AI wasn't always able to finish the race, so the reward it could collect from the checkpoints was considerably less. But from here, the AI almost always completed the race, and the only reward remaining to optimize was those position rewards by finishing and spending as much time at the top. I'll hasten to remind you that this includes learning to battle with none other than itself. Jumping forward to 72 hours, this AI was out for blood. The thing that really impressed me was its use of items. It learned to be extremely aggressive, opting to sabotage its brethren even at the expense of its own safety. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you'll probably know that item usage hasn't really tended to be a strong point. But the main reason for this is that when the AI was just playing against CPUs, it spent most of its time front running. So items just weren't really that important. However, when you, you yourself are also in a game, front running in peace is not an option because you've got other racers who are just as good as you are. Also, I gave the AI a reward for using its item to try and encourage things along. In retrospect, I may have given it a bit too large of a reward as it would often use its item near immediately rather than being safer and holding an item. While maybe not optimal, this did make for some of the most aggressive and chaotic Mario Kart I've ever seen. Here we are at last. After six full days of training, the AI was playing Mario Kart like I've never seen it be able to before. Its lines were pretty exceptional. Its item usage was ruthless. And I'm pretty certain if this thing could play online with real people, it was at least good enough to make anyone break a sweat. Around two years ago, I set out on the journey of trying to create a Mario Kart Wii AI that was completely self-taught using no human data. I started off taking days, if not weeks, to get it to simply drive around Luigi circuit alone. No items, no CPUs. Now, with reinforcement learning and modern AI becoming even more capable, this is possible even on a single desktop computer. Don't get me wrong, this AI isn't perfect. It does have still a few holes in its knowledge. But if I put this AI in a game with the best players in the world, do I think it would win? Probably not. The best humans are really good at Mario Kart, and their skill cannot be underestimated. But as for the other 99%, myself included, this might be game over. I like to think of myself as being a pretty good Mario Kart player. I mean, back before the Wii servers got turned off way back in 2014, I reached the max online rating of 9999. But I'll tell you now, this AI was better than I am. The evidence? For some of the recent races, I was actually in the game. Could you tell? Do you know who I'm playing as? right now? Is it scarier if you couldn't tell? Or if you could only tell because the AIs were better? I'll leave you to argue about that in the comments. But after finishing this AI, I participated in 60 races against my silicon counterpart. I won a total of three races, and I can guarantee I've played this game for longer than six days. Yes, 
I spent much of that time playing on other tracks as well as SNES Mario Circuit 3, but I think my point still holds. Overall, this was a pretty humbling experience for me. Beyond Mario Kart, if you asked me a year ago if AI safety was a real concern, I'd say it wasn't on the top of my mind, but AI is getting really strong, really fast, and the threat of safety is no longer something for Hollywood movies and sci-fi films to entertain us with, but instead a real concern I feel that a lot of people are not taking seriously enough. Taking a slightly more optimistic mystic look on things, I do believe this technology has the potential to do some really useful stuff. Take coaching for one example. Here, you can see a small coaching screen I made, which uses the AI to criticize my driving in real time. In the bottom left, you can see both my actions and what the AI would have done in my position, highlighted in red where we disagree. Also, in the top left, you can see how the AI values the actions I chose to take compared to its action, with red high spikes indicating that it doesn't approve of my choice. What I've got here is pretty basic, although I think it demonstrates how this technology could become really useful. Anyway, on a slightly cheerier note, I hope this video made your day just a little bit better. I had a great time making it, so I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Also, I just hit 20,000 subscribers, so thank you to all the kind words I've received along the way. That's all from me, but if you want to see me getting absolutely trashed by the AI for a few more minutes, enjoy.